Okay, hello, Apple people. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, March 4th, 2021. May the 4th be with you. Uh, I'm Ben Greiner, Director, Director of Apple Technology at Antiva. My co-host, as always, is Chad Calise, our Cyber Resilience Lead. And with us today is our special guest, Jason Detburn. Jason is the founder and CEO of Adigy. Adigy builds the software we use to manage our Apple devices. And businesses are adopting Apple technology at a rapid pace. Adigy was created to help companies adapt to this change. And that's why we have Jason here today to talk about this. Thank you, Jason. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Great. To have, thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. And you're, uh, I think I can see the palm leaves in the background. You're in Miami, right? Yeah, but at this time of year, people are not as, as threatened and frustrated about it as they are in like December, <laughs> January. Yeah. Oh, sure. They're, they're cursing That's my sense. name when, when I get on a webinar. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a gray, wet day here in Chicago. Oh. Uh, but I know I was, uh, you and I met, I guess it's been a few years now when I came down to the Adagy conference in Miami. And um, actually, it, it was the Adagy conference, I think was my, my at the very beginning of COVID, that was the first one that got canceled, that was totally booked. You know, I had, I had the hotels and the flights and everything, and I, I'm sure that was a tough decision for you to make to cancel that, But that because that was early days and we didn't know what was going on. But looking yeah. back, uh, obviously, you did the right thing. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back to a point where we can have in in you know, live conferences again. Agreed. We're booking it again next February. This one I think we're going to make happen. All right. He's going to stand in our way. So I, we only have 30 minutes. I'd like to keep it to that. And, and Chad, if you could help me, uh, I always forget to check uh, the chat and the sure. uh, participation. So let's keep an eye on that. Um, sure. But I want to start by defining some terms, uh, especially in the context of what Adagy offers. And um, Jason, I was going to mention, I looked on your website just to kind of make sure I wasn't you know, behind the times of, of anything that you were promoting. And I saw that you were using the term Apple device management, which is a term I'm going to adopt because I, I have historically used the Apple term mobile device management or MDM. And that has caused some confusion because mobile implies uh, that it's just a smartphone, maybe a laptop. But really, when we talk about Apple device management, even MDM, whatever we call it, it's all Apple devices, right? That's right. That's right. And more importantly, because you, know, you think about the the workhorses of um, of business, it's it's the Macs that people are using. And if they're using uh, tools that are designed for managing predominantly mobile phones, it's just not going to provide the the level of service, the level of need um, to unleash the talent people have on a Mac. So yeah, we, we, we really want to make sure it's, it's device management. Um, that is the, the key point. Yeah. And, and there, there's tons of confusion in the marketplace because so many people, because of the popularity of the iPhone, so many companies have jumped on what I would call the Apple MDM bandwagon and said, we manage Apple devices. But when you look at what they actually do, and I always say we all live in Apple's playground. We can only do what Apple allows us to do. But when you look at what they adopt, it's such a small slice of what Apple offers. Whereas Adigy, and this is why we work with Adigy, offers the full gamut of what Apple offers. Is that fair to say? Yeah, because you know Apple does give us a protocol to use. And one of the key things that we like to leverage and what Antiva is then able to leverage through our tools is to go outside of that protocol and do a lot more than just what what's given to us there. And, you know, you got to be careful how far outside the lane you go with it. But um, we've, we've built some years of practice around how we can do that and provide that extensibility. And, and just being sure you think about it, I, I always get this notion when people are looking at the, the cost of an Apple device versus a Windows device. And, you know, and, and I look at like, how much do we pay our employees and then how much office space costs and insurance and everything that goes along with it. And there won't almost their single point of outlet for productivity is that computer that they use. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so important to make sure that they have the highest level of productivity capability ability uh, possible. And we talked about, you know, a year ago with like the conference, when, when everything hit a year ago, that's all people had. They went home with their Mac and that was their only um, 
tunnels capability for productivity, for yeah. connectivity with their, their peers. And so it's just become so important to make sure that you're elevating their capabilities and their talents. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good point, and I think we we could all, all three of us here could talk for another half hour just about the why why people still think the Apple uh, platform is expensive, which I think has has been dispelled so many times. But um, keeping keeping it on track here, I wanted to yeah. touch on you know why why in your view, I and Chad and I have our own views, but what what in your experience, why is it important for businesses? To, to manage their devices because I still talk to some companies who are kind of clueless about that and they're like yeah we don't we don't do that yeah I, I I you know obviously I'm biased because as a company we want people to use our, our tools but at the same time you think about the onboarding experience you have a new employee that comes in you're shaping their experiences from the moment they walk in and their sense of the security posture the organization has their investment in, in people's productivity. So you want them to be able to pull that thing out of the box and everything mm -hmm. magically pretty well happen for them and, and get them to a productivity point very quickly. It just shows the, the maturity of the organization. Then ongoing, as things happen, as you know, uh, security issues that get patched with 11.3 and other things, how quickly can does my company address those and deal with them? And last but not least, you, you have to deal with the in, inevitable churn or life cycle in an organization, how you manage through the protection of your data and your devices and, and users. So, I mean, I just, I don't know how any organizations think it's still, a, a, you know, status quo to, to, to put that out there without, um, you know, really helping the team manage them. Yeah, it's it's probably tied, and I'm just speculating, of course, but it's probably tied to this mental model that Macs don't get viruses. A lot of there's so many people out there that still believe that, and I think a lot of leadership just thinks that, you know, Macs are just kind of immune to a lot of the things going on and it's taken us you know a long time to to help educate people to to you know help them proactively you know put a fleet management tool like this in place because it's it reduces the attack surface it just minimizes a lot of preventable risks but it's not easy helping people understand that we spent a fair amount of our time just you know elevating their understanding yeah it's a good point and it's, it's not byd anymore uh, let's say example let's say you you're using a security software tool that you hope is is going to do its job right you can name any one of them out there they're not going to do its job unless a a, a a device management platform can bless that software automatically otherwise it won't be able to do the job it's intended to do period um and that's you know it's about that supply chain of everything you can deliver yeah Right, and and from where you know Chad and I sit, managing, helping people manage their technology, and obviously concerned about security and resilience, uh, is pretty much you have to today have something that gives you the ability to um, you know understand how your team is using technology, what technology they're using, whether they're up to date or not, and be able to sit in front of an auditor, which Chad and I have done many times, and prove to them that we're doing what we said we would do to protect, you know, client data um, and our own and our own data. Yeah, that's um, probably the, the, the single biggest kind of tenet that makes it easy for us to transmit to, you know, leadership audiences, for example, mm -hmm. that compliance, right? Just a, an MDM, like a fleet management tool right out of the box is demonstrable proof that you're trying right in a compliance scenario right where you're trying to you know help uh, an auditor ex you know understand scope and understand you know your, your organization um it's really invaluable and so I, I it's getting easier to help people understand this because of compliance mm. yeah and at the very basic level um you know fleet management is a term i often hear uh, as well in the apple uh, um you know ecosystem and it's true like yeah when you only have a few computers you, you can you know you can kind of keep track of them. But as soon as you have even 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, 1,000, you, if you don't have a tool, it, there's no way, that, you know, an Excel sheet is not going to help you <laughs> keep track of these devices. One, one thing that I'm always thinking about too, Ben, is, is the C-suite and how many Macs are in the C-suite. And, and if they're, you know, if they're a blind eye to what IT is doing, 
what's the level of IP and exposure? Arguably, if you're a, if you're a security attacker and you've got a few unmanaged Macs in an organization, there's probably some good high quality information on those devices, especially depending like on who's that. using them if they're in the C-suite. So, yeah. it, you know, it's always a tax surface. It's really important. Yeah, it's just raising the cost. That's how we frame it uh, a lot of the time is raising the cost for criminals, right? Putting a, a bigger, beefier, more visible bike lock on the bike, so to speak, right? And hopefully they'll go down the block and, you know, pick someone else. And actually, last point, I don't know if this goes to the next topic, but, you know, the the reasons why it was a bit of a, a more secure platform was just because there wasn't that many uh, people in business with Macs. So now the attack surface, if you look at what Apple put up as far as a quarter last week, it's it's gone, you know, stratospheric. And this is yeah. the leading indicators for, as we have more and more Macs out there, a lot more people are, are going to choose that as their targets for security hacks. Like yeah, and I want to I want to talk about uh, Apple's rise in in, in profits and, and Macs and all that good stuff. But before we do that, uh, Jason, you spent seven years at Kaseya, and for people that don't know, Kaseya, you know, is a tool focused on managing Windows devices. Um, I don't know if they claim to do any Apple devices or not, but but I was curious what you know what motivated you to to live in this Windows world and say I want to start a Apple based company. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it was definitely the majority. When I was starting Adigy itself, people would always ask me, "Really, how many how many Apple devices are there in business?" But it was it was very clear that it was a, a giant blind spot. You had very large organizations, um, and and you know, from big design firms to tech companies out there, they were all um, Apple focused. But you needed to have a cloud based platform that really did it. It was just a very clear blind spot for every IT vendor in the market. Um, so yeah, with the second child in the way, I said, it's, it's time to quit my job and and build this company from the ground up. Um, and uh, we, we've done that in spades. So yeah, yeah and, and build it for the cloud, right? As you said, build it for the cloud yeah. first. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh, at the time, um, and how many years has it been since you started Adigy? Uh We're almost seven years in. Yeah. Seven years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So almost seven years in. So seven years ago, did you, uh, were you already seeing the rise in Apple and anticipating that or? Yeah, we were seeing the trends and the changes of what's going on out there. Um, you know, none of these things happen all that quickly either. I think everybody was expecting mobile devices would take over the Mac. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, we don't change our habits all that often. We use a keyboard and mouse we have for 30 years. It's the way we work. Um, things will change slowly, but, um, you know, I don't expect, I think the Mac will continue to be our workhorse system and, and we're seeing the shifts in growth and change. I'll give you an example, like Ernst & Young is expecting to have a pretty tremendous, uh, large portfolio of Macs compared to their windows. And they're, they're one of the largest windows based organizations in the world. Um, there's just large sweeping trends happening, uh, out there in the market. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about that. I know you ha you and I reviewed some slides earlier. Maybe we could bring those up and um, tell me if you have that ability to share your screen. Yeah, if I, need to I can do, do that here. Okay, sure. Give me just a second here. All right. So you know, we we look at the Apple trajectory itself. Give me a moment. There we go. Um, Apple put up some pretty tremendous numbers you know, way above their estimates. Um, and so one of the really pretty- This was just last week, right? This the, was last the, week, yeah. exactly. And and so the Mac growth was 70% uh, uh, higher here year over year. And, and their iPad revenue also just dramatically jumped up as well. Um, th these to us are, are a lot of those leading indicators for where things are trending. I'll give you a quick example too. Four and a half years ago, when you looked at what Apple did to the Macs, they hadn't done a harbor refresh on any of the Macs for uh, almost three years. There was a, a couple little minor th changes they had made. And there was very solid rumors that they were gonna possibly end of life it. The amount of money that they're pouring in to the R&D work and the, the trending here is phenomenal. And this is where we're seeing a lot of the, the major shift is the new Apple Silicon. 
is the level of performance, especially based on battery life, where people are going a full week before they have to, you know, pull up to a, a charge port and, and charge their Mac. That is game changing for organizations, especially in such a mobile market today. So there is no, um, there, there is no denying the, the absolute growth that we're seeing in enterprise today. And one of the really other crazy slides that I like to share too is uh, from a, a, a website called Stack Counter. That's looking at the amount That's of cool. internet traffic by device. So if we get rid of the actual you know, number of devices that are out there, we just look at what's consuming internet traffic it's Apple devices consuming by far the most internet traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the, this is the consumption. This is where the work is being done. Um, so uh, it's That's cool. pretty, pretty key what we're yeah. seeing here too. Yeah. That's a great slide, Jason. And then one other thing that I, you know, we briefly mentioned too, is I, I think when it comes to uh, this summer, I think we're going to see uh, a mass um <clears throat> decentralization, I guess I would call it. People are really expecting is at least in the U S with vaccinations, people are going to move and we have to support that wholeheartedly. So while there was the work from home slash work from anywhere, people were staying very close to their home. They weren't really, um, you know, getting out, shall I say? So we expect <clears throat> a real, um, a need to support employees in wanting to do, uh, on a European summer here in the U S and, and it is going to be strained to make sure they can provide that productivity and security, um, wherever yeah. they're at. So, well, I just had a kind of speaking of that, I just had a conversation with a, you know, a, a, a client about a project and they want to deploy several devices, uh, you know, ar around the world essentially. And, um, they're, they're relatively new to the Apple ecosystem. So the idea is they're focused on, let's just get these devices. I don't care how we get them, let's get them and, and get them out there. And I was cautioning them to let's slow down, let's do it the Apple way through the Apple ecosystem, because if we do it right, uh, we have management capability you know, out of the box where we can support those devices, um, secure those devices, patch those devices, uh, you know, install software on those devices. But if we just go out and buy a device and give it to people, uh, we have to rely on our people to do that. And we have no way to verify it. Um, we Even if we say, well, we'll do that later, it's like, well, no, that's gonna be a huge pain. Like, and I think about the times where the old days where we would have to ship everything to the IT team. And the IT team would have to touch every single device and then turn it over. And if it didn't work, we'd have to schedule time to remote in and help them. And now there's so much we can do over the air, so much we can do with Adigy uh, and the Apple device management tools to mitigate that and really streamline things. Uh, but there is a process that Apple requires that, that we go through. Um, yeah, and, and I think that's why we see backup become less, um, less needed uh, at mm -hmm. least desktop level backup, because we just look at the workspace experience as, um, you know, we, we can we can tear it down and restart it again because most of the data lives in the cloud, and uh, and we can get that rolling. So that that's been a, a huge shift is is knowing and being able to drop ship devices, getting people up and running, and then, you know, if they have a problem, like look, let's just rebuild your machine remotely, mm -hmm. hang tight. And yeah, uh, it, yeah, it's wonderful. It's great, too, because instead of, ex, you know, expending that time or spending that time on setup and all that stuff, we can use that time to connect with people and give mm -hmm. them some guidance. Right. And in the context of security and compliance and certainly, you know, resilience. And, and so I think we're using the time. In, in ways that are, have more value, not just for the organization, you know, something larger, but also for the individual, because it's a, it's a two way street, right? We have to, we all share the same fate when something goes wrong. It's, and it's, it's important for anybody listening to know, you know, we work with uh, at Adagy, uh, we're going on 2000 MSPs globally, right? So we work with a lot of managed service providers um, and there's varying levels of skills uh, around them. We provide training, but, you know, the Antiva team is literally one of the top globally in the skills and the utilization of our tools and the Apple technology stack. So it's not all, you know, you have to really take into effect. There's a lot of people that use even our tools, um, 
but it's the quality of service from your managed service provider. And believe me, guys, I'm not getting, there's nothing from my plug here. Just knowing, there's a good example of this. <clears throat> so my wife does anesthesia for a living, right? She sees surgeons working in the OR next to her. She knows how things really get done and how, how, how good surgeons are. We know great MSPs and Tiva is the top MSP globally for Apple devices. So it's, it's important well, for yeah. people yeah. to know that. Yeah. 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 Thank you for that. And, and you know, I, uh, I do appreciate your perspective because I know you've come from the windows world, you've moved to the Apple world. Um, I, I you know, uh, yeah, on the one hand I come in and me coming from the Apple world and I have to be careful here because I don't want to put down the windows world, uh, because the, we need them and, uh, yes. and we know they still dominate uh, the market. But the, the Windows MSP world, I feel, is, is very mature in many ways. But the Apple way of doing things, I feel, is so uh, a bit further advanced than, than what I'm seeing from Windows. I don't know if that's honestly true. I know, I know Microsoft has Intune. I know they're, they're uh, sort of headed in a similar direction if we, if we think about the long term. But Apple really is, it, like in all things Apple, they're very advanced in what they do. It's just they're not good at sharing what they're doing for the long term. So people are, are get frustrated. And of course, when they get frustrated, they blame it on the device. So uh, I think Chad and I do a good job of, of educating people on why it has to be done a certain way. And, and if you do it this way, it'll work beautifully. But do you have any any plight things you can add to that, Jason? As, yeah, as far as no. your experience. <laughs> I, I think I think you're right in both respects. Um, there there is aspects that Windows based uh, organizations do really really well, and the thing is at a, is identity is is you know you you sit down in front of uh, back from NT Windows NT days and mm -hmm. you log in and you have your user profile based to to, to how you use it. Um, so organizationally based, Microsoft thinks that way. Mm -hmm. Apple hasn't done that. They, they really myopically focus on the person who's sitting right behind the keyboard. Um, and that just means the organization is just left astray. We've felt that we've been filling that gap and getting that more Microsoft-like, and that's what really helps organizations. Um, so that aspect, I think, you know, Windows-based is, is definitely done a better job at, but They've just introduced, or they've been introducing Windows Autopilot, which is sort of the, the automated device enrollment, this, this out of the box experience, which mm -hmm. Apple is definitely ahead, ahead of the curve on. Um, so I, I think it's kind of a, you take the best of both worlds. And if we can do those well, that's just right. the leading edge of the market for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one of the exciting things about, you know, forget computers joining Antiva was learning from uh, a fully established mature MSP, how they're doing things and then bringing the Apple perspective to that. And like you said, best of both worlds, let's bring it together. And speaking of identity, I know, uh, you know, Adigy has Adigy identity, uh, which we're also using uh, connected to our uh, Office 365. I think it's technically Azure AD, Active yep. Azure Active Directory, uh, to log into Macs using the Microsoft credentials. So that is kind of what you mentioned, taking a step closer to being more, you know, traditionally Windows friendly in an Apple world. Yeah, and, and, and getting that to a, a further point where if uh, if somebody changes departments, if they if they leave, you're literally just expiring that that Azure AD um, credential, the the the, the the, the account and everything follows suit because that is the center of how we do everything with security and continuity is you choose your IDP, that, that central identity provider, and everything is meant to feed off of that. And anything falls out of that becomes a real challenge in an IT perspective because they're all supposed to stay connected with that one uh, utility. So, mm -hmm. and, and there are differences. Uh, I'm sure you know them very well between Mac OS and iOS. Mm -hmm. Do, do we think Apple will ever allow an identity login on a iOS device? No, I, I, I don't think so. I, I think what people are doing is, is just making sure that like productivity tools like mm -hmm. uh, 365 and others in any area that, that requires identity, those utilities 
are the ones that you use. It's actually a really interesting thing. Like you think about, I'm going to get off on a slight tangent here, but you, okay. you think about like China, right? It doesn't, they don't give out mobile phone numbers. Uh, they, they, everything's through WeChat. So mm. the actual app itself is really the operating system that they use over there. They give out these sort of temporary um, capabilities for, for, for connectivity, for talking to people, texting. They don't give out phone numbers. Like that's doesn't, it would never be thought thought of that way. Um, oh, so it's not uh, like hey, here's my phone number, give me a call. No, no. It, it's, it's like here's, he, my here's a way to WhatsApp ID or sort of like that. Your, your WeChat yeah. ID, and that's temporary. If I'm just meeting this person, and then I could shut it off, and you just you have full control of your connectivity, your your the way you're transferring mm -hmm. money, everything. Um, and so basically, the phone becomes less of a an actual you know utility it's it's the wechat app itself that you live in for everything um I, that's my point is i think you'll see apps become the the full gamut of what people do a lot more of and that will that'll be the container of that identity mm -hmm. yeah yeah so. well i certainly uh use my phone number less and less uh that's for sure it's uh, a good idea yeah it's a good idea I'll use it less it's that's well said jason that's really true and you can tokenize things that way too, where, you know, it's just a better model for overall resilience, right? Than giving away all these pieces, right? A mobile number is a great example, right? We've seen a rise in SIM swap attacks uh, this last year. That's just, you know, astounding, right? It is. And so helping people understand that there's other ways, you know, and, and honestly, like to lie about their birthday, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, the security questions. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I could see this model uh, trickling into our, our own cultures here, you know, in the States, um, which I think is, is a good thing for security for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I know we only have a few more minutes left, but uh, I did want to just, you, you touched briefly on the M1 chip. Um, I mean, I, I, and you and I talked about this when we were on a podcast together. Um, it, it really does feel like that's going to be a game changer once, once they fully migrate, they mean Apple fully migrates to the Silicon chip currently M1. Um, have you, have you had anything changed around that? I know it's still early days, but what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, when it first came out, it, the, the the software was a little bumpy for it, but um, they've been they've been getting that really tight. I think the thing that we're really excited about is we see the M2 chip get released in the fall. Um, this really takes app, what Apple's really good at with their phones and everything else. They start building more and more of the technology into the chip, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't really able to do that with the Intel devices before, so the, they can get even better on security than ever before. They can start adding in new technologies that just are literally embedded in their hardware with in their in their chip, which they're really good at. This means that we're gonna see things change where the traditional PC, as we know it, the traditional computer, is gonna be able to do things we didn't think were possible before. So they've they've got they they put a huge runway in front of them to be able to do a lot more things. Um, the, the power consumption is just going to continue to get better and better performance wise as well. Right. Yeah. And there's just no way anybody else can keep up with that. They, they, they you know, people don't really think about them being such a huge chip design company, but because of their volume, they've been designing chips for a long time now. And it's, it's, it's just, it's going to be hard to keep up. Yeah. I mean, if we, if we look back at that slide you had of all the, all the revenue, even though a large chunk of it comes from their iPhone, they're in so many different businesses and, you know, including content generation for Apple TV. Um, it's just such a different company than it was uh, when, when I got into this business in the late nineties, when, when Apple was predicted to go out of business and, and, and I understand they were like weeks from running out of money. So they almost did go out of business. And now to be the, I haven't checked today, but most days they're the largest uh, yeah. company in the world. That market cap. Yeah. I, and I, I don't, I don't, but they also, the people don't really realize they, they do stay in their lane quite a bit. They don't go outside of their, their, their lanes very well, very often. They stick with what they're good at. They say yeah. no to a lot of things. When you have that much cash in the bank, it's hard to say no to a lot of things, but they do. 
they do. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier for the recording, but you're going to see Valerie Vargas on the list here. Sorry, I didn't introduce Valerie. Valerie was here to make sure Jason got here, <laughs> and, and uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Valerie. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I want to mention, and we'll wrap up here right on the half hour, which is great when we stick to our own schedule and stay in our own lane. Um, our yeah, our next guest in two weeks uh, is going to be Paul Bowden. Uh, I hope, hopefully I said his name right, Paul Bowden. He is the principal program manager of Office for Mac at Microsoft. So we're going to get to talk to Paul about, you know, developing for the Apple platform within Microsoft. I think he's been with Microsoft for over 20 years. So he's going to have a very uh, unique perspective. And I don't, and we'll find out if he's been focused on, on the Apple platform for that long. But uh, I'm excited because so many people uh, think the old days of Apple versus Microsoft. And really today it's Apple and Microsoft. So we're excited to talk to Paul. And Jason, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, yeah. I look Thanks, forward man. to seeing you in person at the, at the next conference or, or somewhere else in the world when, when we can all get together soon. And um, I'm, I'm excited about uh, our future with Adigy and working with Adigy. And I know my team's excited uh, just the you know, you guys are so uh, cooperative and we see something, identify something, or even just have ideas for, mm -hmm. hey, have you, have, have, we, have you thought about this? And um, it's great that we can talk to each other, talk to our teams and work on the problems together, not just kind of do our own thing and hope that, that they'll come together eventually. So At the I end of the day, it's that. all about the users, right? You, you take great care of your, your Apple users and, and we want to make sure that you can provide them the best experience possible, period. That's right. We're all part That's of this together. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We'll all see right. you all in two weeks, everyone. Bye, Bye now.